Hey guys, what's up? This is Aaron, and today we're going to be going through the basics of SketchUp. And SketchUp, if you don't know, uh, is a free open source rendering program originally put out by Google for rendering models to put in uh, Google Earth. But uh, since then, it's sort of it's it's grown. It's become much bigger than just uh, part of Google Earth. So today we're going to be going through just the basics of how the program works and how to really get started using the program. Um, once you get the program booted up, this is pretty much what you'll see. There are different views and different templates with different colors, as well as with different measurements. Uh, you can change all those later. Um, if you've chosen the wrong template and you would like to choose a different template, you can go up to Window and Styles. And this will bring up all the different types of um, templates. Basically what you're looking at here, if you want to choose a colored one or just wireframe, uh, designs, you can choose those as well. I'm just going to be sticking with this sort of architectural gray. For now you can ignore all these buttons up here. They're plugins that I've added to the program that uh, do not come with its standard. But the most important tools you're going to need to know about are these ones and these do come with the program. And if you don't have these ones on your screen you can add those to your screen by going view toolbars and large tool set and that will turn this on and off on the side here. Um, all your other tools are available as well if you'd like to enable shadows for example or layers it's all in here um, so you can you can go in there later to toggle things on and off the most important thing about SketchUp is camera controls and navigation around your model so you really want to get used to learning the camera controls and if you're using a mouse you can zoom in and out on your model by scrolling the mouse wheel and if you're using a trackpad, I believe it's two fingers up and two fingers down. You can rotate around your model by clicking the orbit icon over here. And just simply clicking and dragging around your screen, you'll be able to orbit your model. And you can also pan by clicking the pan tool, just by clicking and dragging as well. You can pan around your model. But because you're going to be navigating around your model a fair bit, it's, it's going to become sort of a second nature to you to do all three of those things very fast. So you can combine scrolling by clicking the mouse wheel and you'll get the orbit icon. And now you can just click and drag the mouse wheel, you can orbit around. If you click the mouse wheel and hold shift, you'll get the pan option. So now you can sort of go around your, uh, your model, your object, fairly quickly. You can zoom in and out and pan and do all those things. So you really want to get used to learning the controls before you um, start building really sophisticated objects and components and things. The second big thing you're going to want to learn about SketchUp is the axes. This is very important. You have the vertical axis, which is blue, and you have the horizontal axes, red and green. When you're drawing, it's very important to remember what axes you're drawing on. So if I just go up to the rectangle tool and I click once, drag to where I want to uh, my shape to be, click again, then I now have a square which is on the red and green axis. If I want this to be on the blue axis as well I can go to what's called the push-pull tool. Click here once, go to where I want, click again. Now I have a box which is on all three planes. The great thing about SketchUp is that it's very easy to divide and create new shapes from pre-existing shapes. For example if I wanted to draw a line down the middle of this box and when I get to the middle of the line it, it'll turn blue which is known as a midpoint. Anywhere else on the line is known as a just an edge and it, it'll turn red and the end of a line is the end point but it'll turn green so you can keep that in mind as well. So I just click here once, drag down to my destination, click again. Then I now have separated this face into two halves which means that if I take the push-pull tool again or P is a keyboard shortcut I can now divide that shape into something completely different. I can do the same over here and on top as well. So you can create very um, very sophisticated shapes very quickly inside SketchUp with just you know a couple of minutes uh, practice. You can also utilize the push-pull tool to create rounded corners and other shapes. If I take the arc tool, which is like the line tool, I'll just click here once, go to where I want the line to end, click again. 
but before I move about I can drag my line up on this edge face and it'll turn blue which basically sort of tries to find the most uh, the smoothest point between both both lines so I'll click there and now I have this curved face in between my other two faces so if I click here and use the push pull tool I can sort of shave the corner off the edge of that part of the box so now I have a rounded corner the only thing is once you round a corner it, it disables the push pull tool so I won't be able to drag anything I mean I can drag down here and drag up here but I can't actually drag this rounded surface and because if I go up to here and turn on hidden geometry this is actually a bunch of faces it's not just one face so I, I can now do these because these are separated faces so this would be a, a an easy way to make a gear I suppose if you wanted to make like a cog or something but the entire face itself cannot be um, pulled or pushed so I'll just turn hidden geometry off as well and you can also uh, turn off other things as well if you want to turn off the axes for some reason then you can turn those off and there are a couple other options here which we'll get into later in addition to making rectangles or boxes you can also make circles and polygons so for circles you'll start at the center of the circle click once drag out your radius and click again and then you can push and pull also if you find that the circle you're making has very square edges you can click the circle tool and down in the bottom bottom left or bottom right it, it may, may be in your case you'll see those little box here it tells you how many sides the circle will have so I'll just type in a hundred hit enter and now the circle that I'm drawing has a hundred faces as a, rather than 24 so it looks much smoother this measurements box can also be used to make very specific sized shapes if I click once and drag around my box you can see that the dimensions in the bottom left are changing so if I wanted this box to be 5 feet by 5 feet I'll just type that into the dimensions box and hit enter and now the the box is 5 feet by 5 feet as I typed but you'll notice that this specific box is a different color than this one that's because SketchUp uses a thing called faces the white face is a front face and in most cases it won't necessarily matter what face is showing but SketchUp likes front faces to be showing on the outside or on the front of objects that you're making so if I wanted to revert this face to a front face I just highlight it right click and reverse face and now the white side is showing something else to keep in mind in SketchUp is clicking a single click will highlight a surface or a line Double-clicking will highlight an entire surface and all of the lines it's connected to. And if you want to highlight an entire model and everything it's connected to all at once, you can triple-click and it'll highlight that. Something else to keep in mind while drawing is SketchUp's inferencing tool. Every line you draw is inferenced. So if I draw a line at this specific angle and then down here want to draw a line at, an, at the exact same angle, all I have to do is start my line go to the line I want to match and then go down here until the line turns pink and it will match the exact same angle as the line I had drawn above and now the surface can also be altered if you would like to rotate something in SketchUp simply highlight the object and go to the rotate tool this will bring up a compass like shape where wherever I click creates the center point of whatever object I'm rotating so if I click over here drag to the face I want it to align to in this case the green face for no particular reason click again it will now rotate around this circle as the center point so I'll put it over here you can also move objects so if I click the move tool over here and then click a face or a corner on a highlighted object I can now move this around wherever I want the same goes for scaling I click here now I can scale I can also sort of transform and skew the actual shape of the box or I can keep it aligned at the exact same dimensions something else you can do in SketchUp is grouping and making components if you'd like to make a component highlight your object go up to edit and then make component you can also name your component so I'll just call this box I'll hit create and now this is grouped 
anything that occurs to this box will happen to any other instance of this particular grouped box. For example, if I edit this specific one, all the other copies of the same file will also be edited in the same manner. If you'd like to make one that doesn't mirror the other copies of it, you can right click on it and hit make unique. This will prevent the object from being edited in the future. If you'd like to erase a line, you can use the erase tool. Simply click on a line or drag over the line and it will erase the surface. This also works on multiple surfaces at once. You can click and hold and just drag around and any lines and surfaces that are uh, affected by the eraser will be erased. In addition to measuring things in SketchUp, if you'd rather measure something before you draw it, you can use what's called the tape measure tool. Click a point of reference and drag to where you want the line to be. If you have a specific measurement in mind, you can then use the length box down in the bottom left corner, same as the dimensions box. I'll type in 5 feet, hit enter, and now I have a line at that part of the box. If I drag, it doesn't affect the actual guide that I created, but if I try to draw a line now with the line tool, it will, st it will snap to where the guide is on the box. If you'd like to get rid of a guide, you can just erase it, but if you have a lot of guides that you'd like to get rid of all at once, you can go edit delete guides and it will delete all the guides currently in the model. Also keep that in mind if you have some guides you would like to keep because it will get rid of those as well. Something else you can do in SketchUp is paint surfaces. So if I click the paint bucket tool, my materials will drop down. And I can paint this any number of colors. These are a bunch of uh, preset colors that are here. If none of these suit my liking, I can make my own. But for now, I'll pick this red. You can just click on a surface and it will paint it. Paint the surface orange. But if you'd like to apply a photo texture to something, you can do that as well. Up here, in your materials you can drop down and use a bunch of preset materials. If none of these are to your liking you can uh, use your own pictures as well. But for now I'll use one of these textures and they, they work the same as paint. So you just click on them and then paint them. If for some reason they're not the right scale you can use edit. And here you have your measurements box which will tell you the exact size of the texture it's currently at 1 foot 5 inches. If I want this to be 1 foot, I can just type that in. You'll also notice that at the end of my measurements, I'm typing an apostrophe. If I don't type an apostrophe, SketchUp will recognize this as an inch. So you don't need to type in the inch symbol. You can just leave it as 1. You can also change the opacity of a texture down here, which will make it see-through, which is good for glass if you would like to make windows or other things. If you've already drawn a line but would like to move it, all you have to do is highlight the line, switch to the Move tool, and now I can drag this anywhere I want on any specific plane. But I'm just going to drag this in a little bit on the red axis. And you'll notice that when I drag it, the line coming out from my actual cursor is dotted red. That means I'm on the red axis. And if I stop for a second, the Alt box that comes up will tell me I'm on the red axis. I can also do that on other faces as well. If I click this point and hold Alt, then it will allow me to create multiple faces on something that only had one face before. I can also draw a line between here and here, and it will fill in between the, those two faces. As you can see, we've ended up with a bit of a mess, but that covers the basics of what SketchUp can do. In the next few parts, we'll uh, discuss more advanced uh, tools and techniques for creating objects and things. Uh, so thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.